Okay, welcome to the chapter called Astronomy and Cosmology, where we'll be looking at uh, how do you understand what is beyond our Earth, what's in the universe out there. So, Miss Lee has something to show us today. Miss Lee, what is happening here? What is this? If you look at this app called Star Walk 2, plug, go and install it if you want to try this out your own, it shows you the night sky. So, since we can't travel due to COVID restrictions, this is actually the South Pole. And if you look at that shiny, shimmering surface, that's the sea level. And if you look up, assuming that the sky is dark enough, in the night sky, we see so many bright, shiny stars. So beautiful. Miss Ellie, can you tell us more about the stars that we're looking at? I'm not an astronomy expert, but you can see the names, lah, okay? Some of them, ah, okay, we, okay. We, we, call the, we call the bright things stars. <laughs> But some of them are, are, are nebula, some of them are actual stars. Some of them are different, different things. Some are a bit fuzzy. And you see this huge streak that goes across the sky. This is our Milky Way galaxy. You can only see it if you're in a very dark place. So if you're in a polluted city, unfortunately, you cannot see that. But we, our galaxy is called the Milky Way. It's kind of shaped like a disc, okay? And we are somewhere in the middle. So you see this whole thing wrapped around us, which is what you see here on Miss Lee's screen. It goes all the way around this side. So one thing that you need to know is when the people last time looked out in the sky and saw all these stars, they're like, there's a lot of stuff up there. There's even some shooting stars. Wait, wait, I think I see shooting stars down on this side. Zoom in a bit, Miss Lee. Near the near Virgo. Virgo. Ah, near Virgo. So sometimes, I mean, actually quite often, if it's dark enough, you can see some of these shooting stars. So the idea is, Okay, let's stay on this screen. If you look at the different, different stars, they have different brightness. Some are a bit more bright, some a bit less bright. Is it less bright because it is just smaller or is it further away? So that's what the astronomers were supposed to study. All right, so the first thing we need to know is luminosity. So that term here is something you want to write down in your notes. Luminosity, where we use the symbol L. Mm-hmm. You can think of luminosity as very similar to power because when we talk about brightness and wave, it's still energy transfer across a distance, right? So luminosity is the total power of EM radiation because light, light is electromagnetic radiation emitted by an object. And in this case, what are we looking at in the night sky? Stars. So we are studying electromagnetic waves from distant, distant stars. And because this is power, the unit is our good old watt. W-A-T-T. So think of luminosity as a stand-in for power, but it is the wave energy, electromagnetic wave energy from the beautiful shining star. So once you know the luminosity, like, what do we do it for? It's just like, oh, here's a bright star. That's a dim star. It doesn't really provide... That's a brighter star. Yeah, it doesn't... Like, you look at all these nice stars. It doesn't tell us what we actually want to know in the first place, which is what's out there? How far? So the second thing you need to know that brings in the idea of distance... Ooh, give me a second to change point. This one is the idea of what we call radiant flux intensity because the symbol we use here is f f okay, let me scroll up a little bit mm -hmm. okay and whenever you see the term flux you may think about this from your electromagnetic induction or your magnetic fields chapter basically it's something that passes through an area so we have to bring in the idea of intensity and area so why is area relevant uh, it's because, okay, let's look at the star again. So, Miss Lee, can you pick a, a random star in the sky, maybe like one of these fellas? Ah, let's zoom in and see. Okay. Ah. So, you see, when, when you are like right in front of this bright glowing object, it's really bright, blindingly so. But what happens if you zoom out? The further you go, it's just like a barely a tiny dot in the sky. So, that is related to the idea of how... The further you are, the less bright it appears, and we need some way to quantify it. 
this one we can also call this flux idea as the apparent or observed brightness that depends on how far away you are. Okay, so here's an example of a zoom-in picture of the Orion Nebula. Got a chance to learn how to take a picture like this when I was in uni. So, okay, how does this flux thing work? So let's say um, there is this star right here. Mm -hmm. If you're really close to it, it's really bright and big. But if you get further and further away, the star appears to be less bright. So for example, this is a star. I draw some lines for reference. Say you're at a certain distance mm -hmm. over here. Yeah, so this is the distance of the observer. Let's say, for example, the observer is really, really close to the star. The area that the star's energy or the star's power or the star's, remember, luminosity, the area is kind of small, spreads out over a small area. So there is energy, electromagnetic radiation coming out from the star, but it's very close, D equal to 1. It's a small area, okay? Let's say we now go further away to D equal to 2. This wave energy is spread out over a larger area. And because it's area, the size double makes the area four times more. Ah, so previously your energy is shared in one square. Now it is shared in four squares. So the energy is spread out. That's why it appears to be darker to the observer at D equal to 2. Let's bring this observer further to D equal to 3. Now push the further back. D equal to 3, oh. now the luminosity is decreased by 9 times compared to D equal to 1. Because now the size of your square is now 3 times the original size. So 3 times 3 will be 9. So now that luminosity is spread out across a surface area that is 9 times larger. This is also called the inverse square law. And it's something that you have probably seen before when you studied waves in your AS. So astrophysics is a really nice way to relearn or remember all the physics that we've done before. Okay, so the intensity law is... is 1 over d square. Yeah, sometimes I like to use r to confuse you, but it's distance from a point. So the, the same okay. amount of energy is just keeps getting spread out over a larger area, is that right? Yep. Mm, okay. So this inverse square law is kind of like, also, I, this is part of a circle. Lah, okay? Imagine that this is a circle. You got the first diameter, second diameter, third diameter. It's a circle. Hmm? Okay. And the reason why we think of it as a circle is because the star is a point source and the light travels out in all directions, radiating from the star as if the star is the center of a sphere. Sounds like a deal. Okay, let's write mm -hmm. down the equation that's related to this. So what we have here is our, what you call that? Flux Radiant. intensity. Mm -hmm. We use the symbol and, uh, F, right? Yep. So F here, radian flux intensity, will be our luminosity divided by, because related to area. So right here, area. That is the general equation. Uh, but I think we can substitute for area into other equations that are related to the distance d also, right? So if you imagine a sphere, we are looking at the surface area of a sphere, right? And the surface area for a sphere can be written as 4 pi d squared, where d is the distance of the observer from the luminous object or from the star. So this is the equation you want to jot down for this chapter. Very important one here. Mm -hmm. So some notes on the units, if you have to know the units. Flux. Mm -hmm. What is flux again, miss? Ah, this one has the same units as uh, intensity, power per unit area. See the word intensity there? So power per unit area will be watt per meter squared. Okay, right. and luminosity? Luminosity is the same as wave power, so it has the unit of watt. And d square is the distance of the observer from the star or from the luminous object, which is also similar to imagining the star as a wave source that produces 3D spherical waves. 
Okay, so this one will be just distance, uh, meter, I'm guessing. And the final point to, to understand here is when we look at the star and we observe how bright it is, the reason for this exercise is for us to be able to accurately measure the distance of the bright object because we want to know how far away are we from all these beautiful galaxies. How far away? So now, we want to be able to uh, measure the distance of distance galaxies. We are on Earth. So the observed brightness F, or the radiant flux intensity F, is measured on Earth. So maybe we look at it from a telescope. Um, and once we have this radiant flux intensity, if we know the actual luminosity of the star, distance can be calculated. All right. So imagine where we are looking at the night sky, and we measure the F. And if we know L, we can find D. We'll look at some examples after this video. So the whole point of finding luminosity and flux, one of the biggest takeaways is you can find distance, D. So that was revolutionary because people look at the night sky and now they spend years just studying how far away are these, all these objects, how big is our universe? We realize actually it's quite big. So Miss Lee, just pick some star. Let's see, do we, mm. what do we see? Let's choose a different star, I guess. And uh, most apps or even the internet can actually tell you the information about the star and also some measurement the, about the star. And the most interesting one would be the last one, distance from the sun. So we can actually somewhat reliably measure distance. And if you're, think, if you're wondering why it's LY, that is light years. Really, really far away. So that's how people study the universe. Measuring distance is the first part of it. Okay, so that's all for this first section. Make sure you got your equations down, know your terms. We'll see you in the examples and in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Rem remember to look at some stars.